Hi everyone, my name is Colby and I'm a researcher here at the University of North Carolina at Charlotte who specializes in machine learning and cloud computing. Specifically, I use these technologies to answer questions in infectious diseases like E. coli or malaria and in human genomics. In this short spiel about myself, you certainly didn't hear me use the word robot, but let me tell you a little story about the time when my mother thought that I worked on them. In 2015, my mother went to the movies and saw a film called Ex Machina. Now, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's about a sentient humanoid robot that, spoiler alert, ends up killing her engineer and another programmer guy and then breaks out of the lab to live with society. My mother calls me after this movie, excited, and says, you have to see this movie. This guy does what you do. Yes, you heard that correctly. My mother kind of thought that I created robots for a living. However, I guess she does get some points for partial correctness, as artificial intelligence has plenty of areas that overlap with robotics. I just don't work on them. I think the best way to describe what I do is that I'm kind of like a fortune teller. Bear with me here. But with math and big computers, and I research deadly genetic disorders and infectious diseases, which, in my opinion, are way cooler yet equally as terrifying as killer robots. Artificial intelligence, data science, and machine learning are all fairly new terms that have just begun gaining popularity. But just because a term is popular, it doesn't necessarily mean that everyone instantly understands it, the benefits and, and risks, or its applications, and how it will affect our lives. In fact, since the term AI is a buzzword these days, I think that many people probably use the term without understanding anything about the work that goes into it. I was a first-generation college student, and when I announced that I was going to major in mathematics, I remember my father naively asking, what are you going to do with that degree? Teach? And I'm like, no. But then I started my first job uh, working as an instructional assistant, teaching math and SAT prep courses, which I truly loved. Soon thereafter, though, I began my career at, in machine learning and analytics, working and consulting for various companies, doing everything from predicting plumbing product sales, seriously, to working on really exciting biomedical applications. One thing is for certain, I had no idea that this is what I was going to be doing. If you've ever been asked the age-old question of what do you want to be when you grow up, at some point your answer may have included doctor, lawyer, teacher, nurse, or whatever you thought your parents did for a living. But there's a common theme among these occupations. They've existed for hundreds to thousands of years. I come from a family of individuals whose job titles included building supplies manager, feed store owner, antiques dealer, auto parts manager, and septic tank putter in her. But I certainly didn't come from a science trajectory. I just happened to be good at math and science in school. I recently asked a former high school teacher to survey her graduating class around their intended major when they go off to college. By the way, this is a group of students that attended the same school where I went years ago. Here are the results. As you can see, only about 23% of this year's graduating class are planning on picking a STEM major. I should note that this is an early college high school where students are very well prepared for picking careers and have been taking college classes since their freshman year. In contrast, take a look at LinkedIn's top 15 emerging jobs of 2020. Note that a majority of them are STEM, highlighted in orange, and specifically tech. I began to ponder why science jobs, besides the obvious popular ones like engineer or physician, aren't popular choices among kids in school. I think the reason is because STEM jobs are elusive and confusing and that we don't really popularize them as much as other jobs from other fields. You simply don't see the effects of our work as easily through the media, though science is literally what makes the world go round. Students enjoy looking through a microscope in biology class, but it seems more appealing to be a musician or a cool business guy in a suit with a briefcase or a nurse with a stethoscope helping sick patients. And this may be why many students, when they enter college, end up changing their major because they learn about a new career that they've never heard of before. As you enter my rural North Carolina home county, there is a sign that reads, Welcome to Caldwell County, home of Madison Bumgarner, 2014 World Series MVP and just below it, home of Eric Church, country music artist. Now, while I love country music and appreciate the talent and hard work it takes to be a musician or a great baseball player, there's someone else missing from that sign. No, I don't necessarily mean me, although, you know, if they wanted to put me on it, I'd be fine with that. Caldwell County was once the home of the late Dr. Carrie Mullis, the winner of the 1993 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Mullis is most notably known for the invention of, or discovery of, polymerase chain reaction, aka PCR, a technique for the rapid amplification of DNA. This technology revolutionized the fields of genetics, forensics, microbiology, and medicine, and is still widely used today in labs all across the world. 
But why had I never heard of him until I stumbled upon his Wikipedia page and just happened to notice that he was from my hometown? My hypothesis is that while most people can understand the impacts of good music or a good sports game, few may actually understand the impact of scientists' work like Mullis. You see, with PCR, we can take a very small sample of DNA, copy it millions of times, and then now be able to study it more effectively. We use this technique all across the globe to study genetic disorders, infectious diseases, plant genetics, and more. And in fact, if you've had the nasal swab COVID-19 test, this test is completed in a lab using a version of PCR. So his discovery was pretty important. Science tends to happen blindly behind the scenes with little to no publicity, while we all just kind of reap the benefits of it. Recently, we've begun to see more science making it into the mainstream. From Elon Musk's awkwardly geometric Tesla truck, to commercials about how companies are starting to work with green algae-based biofuels, to Dr. Fauci updating the U.S. on the scientific advancements in the battle against COVID-19. My hope is that in the coming years, we will use science as the vehicle to push our society forward, fight climate change, cure diseases, and augment our own capabilities to do more. I hope to see less science fiction and more science action. And I hope to see science driving government decisions rather than the complete disregard of science for political gain. I want to see children inspired to learn more about the world around them and how it works. And I challenge you to help make this a reality. If you're a scientist, it's your job to help make your work accessible and understandable and inspiring to others. So if you're still listening and you haven't yet picked a career, or maybe you're looking for a new one, consider the sciences. While we might not entertain the masses like a game of baseball or a concert of your favorite songs, we work on amazing things that can literally change the world. Just promise me that you won't make killer robots. Thank you and stay curious.